Hello there, my friend. It's Cara from the Wedding Planning Podcast, and I hope you're having a wonderful week. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been focusing on ways to maximize your wedding weekend celebration so that you're not left feeling like the entire experience is over in the blink of an eye. The way I see it, the formula is incredibly simple. Instead of just one wedding day that's going to be over before you even know it, why not make space for two, three, or even four separate celebrations? Here's the deal. The average couple will log an 18-hour wedding day full of nonstop activities, appointments, and to-dos. And in all that hustle, it's nearly impossible to be present. So let's do it this way. On the other hand, imagine having two, three, or four opportunities to spend time with your friends and family instead of just one wedding day. What if you welcomed all of your guests with a really casual welcome party? You enjoyed a handful of smaller group meetups throughout your wedding weekend. Of course, you're going to have an amazing ceremony and an awesome reception. And then recap all the fun with a post-wedding day farewell champagne brunch. This very quick, very simple example of a wedding weekend celebration is doable within any budget and it will elevate your celebration from a six hour frenzied reception to a two, a three, or maybe even a four day experience that you and your guests will never forget. But as we all know, sometimes things are easier said than done. There are six big mistakes that I see couples make over and over again as they're putting plans in place for their welcome party, rehearsal, ceremony, reception, a post-wedding brunch, or any combination of these things. And when I say mistake, not like you didn't pack Advil in your wedding day emergency bag, or you gave drunk Uncle Fred the microphone for a speech at the reception. These are bigger with much higher stakes. So let's jump into some of the top mistakes that I've seen couples make as they start planning out their multi-day wedding celebration. Mistake number one is to dismiss the entire idea of a wedding weekend celebration because you think that obviously hosting multiple events would just be too expensive. If you're thinking we can barely afford to host one wedding with our budget, let alone three to four additional events, you are definitely not alone. And I'm here to assure you that there are infinity number of ways to create the wedding that you want within a set budget, whether that's $10,000 or $100,000. Facilitating multiple days full of fun activities and opportunities to spend quality face time with your closest friends and family, this does not mean that you need to host elaborate meals at expensive venues with over-the-top bells and whistles and options and that you have to pay to transport people between events over the course of four days or foot the bill for extreme exotic activities for 60 of your loved ones. There are endless, very affordable and very simple solutions for ways to plan out a wedding weekend, regardless of what your overall budget is. So here are a couple of examples. The first one, a destination wedding at an all-inclusive resort in Mexico. You aren't personally paying for everyone to be there, You're simply investing a few thousand dollars in the experience, and then all of your guests, they pay their own way. So for the price of a few days at a resort, which, by the way, can be very affordable, you're going to end up celebrating with your core group of family and friends for five to seven days. That's incredibly special, meaningful, unique, and it would be literally like 20 times more time spent together hanging out for likely 1 20th of the price tag of hosting a traditional wedding reception. Wedding weekend planning mistake number two is trying to accommodate everybody perfectly. We touched on this last week in our Q&A, and I'll repeat here, there is no such thing in the wedding planning world as accommodating and pleasing everyone. And 
It, that's true when you're hosting a one day wedding ceremony and reception. And it's definitely true when you're hosting multiple days, even more so. So do yourselves a favor and don't get caught up in trying to make everything perfect for every single person there. Of course, you want to make accommodations where necessary. But in terms of trying to make everyone's experience 1000% perfect, just do yourselves a favor and don't even try. Okay, moving on to our next wedding weekend planning mistake, and that is failing to consider the endless creative possibilities for food and drinks before committing to an overpriced and underwhelming caterer. This area is such a huge missed opportunity for so many couples. To give you an example, a couple who I worked with last year almost signed a contract for their three-day wedding weekend, but something just didn't feel right. And I could tell that they had doubts about the catering price tag and also about the menu options, which they were not incredibly excited about. And when we sat down and started talking, we came to the conclusion that by enlisting the help from just a couple of family members, they could actually create a higher quality menu and have much more creative freedom over the process while cutting the price tag by over 50%. And I think we can all agree that better quality for less money is always a win. So please do not go into this thinking that you need to hire a professional caterer to do every single event you're going to host. That is such a big mistake and you're missing so many other options out there. And our next planning mistake for today is not communicating clearly with all of your guests before, during, and after the wedding weekend. Can you imagine what it would look like to look at your phone and see 73 text messages when you're trying to sit down and relax for just 20 minutes before getting ready for your rehearsal dinner. That can be avoided along with countless other communication fails when you simply leverage some amazing strategies and tools that are available to you. For a very simple example of what I mean, Invest a couple of hours of your time into making an amazing wedding website that answers all of your guests' questions regarding scheduling, transportation, accommodations, dress code, and anything else you can think of. This is just one easy example of being really proactive about communicating and the many ways that you'll need to keep everyone on the same page over the course of your wedding weekend. We have lots of moving pieces. We have lots of different events. We probably have a lot of different people staying in a lot of different places. So make sure you have a solid way of communicating with everyone. Our next planning mistake is losing sight of the end goal when you set out to plan a wedding weekend. And that is you are simply trying to create time and space to connect with the people you love. That is so simple, but so many couples get completely crazy and overwhelmed in feeling that they just don't have the patience or the know-how to plan all of this and to pull it all off. I'm going to quote Dave Matthews, which is my favorite musician ever. And he says, it turns out not where, but who you're with that really matters. So really, really, really take that to heart and think about it. You have full permission as you're planning this out to keep it simple and just stay really focused on what truly matters. And that is creating time and space to connect with the people you love one day and one simple event at a time. I've seen over and over again how incredibly special extended wedding celebrations are and the lasting impact that it makes on a group of family and friends. And especially in today's world, why not make your wedding a magical reason for everyone to gather, reconnect, and just be together? And not just for one short cocktail hour or one sit-down dinner, but for multiple events, coffee meetups, casual breakfasts, a welcome party, a day at the lake, happy hours, lunch dates, none of these things are fancy or expensive or difficult to plan. 
and they all allow for you and your guests to make the ultimate investment in one another. And that's just simply your undivided time. I know the logistics of a wedding weekend can feel really impossible to navigate, especially when you're working a job and finishing school and finding time for your family and your friends, and of course, your relationship. This is a lot and it can feel very crushingly overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be that way. My husband, John, and I hosted a four-day wedding that our loved ones still talk about to this day. It was an opportunity for everyone to experience our city, take a mini vacation, and for all of us to just have four days at the beach and the pool. We had four happy hours, four dinners, four days, and four nights of fun versus just one. Were there stressful moments in planning it all? Oh my gosh, yes, yes. Too many to even count. I would literally need like 20 podcast episodes to outline all of our mistakes and all of my personal meltdowns, but it was 1 million percent worth it. And all of those mistakes and all of those meltdowns at the end of the day, they translated into a priceless firsthand experience that I've been able to share over the years with thousands of engaged couples like you via this very podcast. And our final mistake that I'm going to review for today, and this one is huge. So if you're multitasking, come back to me. And our final mistake is relying on a day of coordinator to organize and manage things for you that are not actually their responsibility. As I know you can see now, hosting a wedding weekend full of multiple events and activities, this comes along with a lot of moving parts. And so many couples think that they can hire and rely on a day of coordinator to manage all the details of each and every event. So they just kind of skip out on being involved in all of the actual details. But the problem is that a day of coordinator has a very limited scope of responsibilities that doesn't typically extend beyond the very simple logistics of a traditional rehearsal dinner, a ceremony, and a reception. So your ability to be proactive and to be independently organized with a detailed itemized plan for each and every event is critical to the success of your wedding weekend. And of course, I don't mean that you personally are going to be that point person for all of these separate events, but at the very least, you're going to need to delegate someone to be there with you to help out with everything. Imagine your food truck and your bartenders are running late for the welcome party, and at the same time, you have 96 guests who are starting to arrive, and then the food truck and the bartenders finally pull up an hour late, and they need direction on where to get everything set up. What what would you do? What's your plan going to be for that? Or picture investing a ton of time and money in creating amazing welcome bags to share with everyone and then finding them still in the boxes on Sunday morning because you didn't think to assign someone to actually hand them out to everyone. You simply have to have a detailed plan for every single step along the way, and a day of coordinator's responsibilities are not always going to extend to the start and the finish of your actual weekend. To wrap things up here, in the interest of time, I chose six common wedding weekend planning mistakes to share with you today, but there are so many more wrong turns and missed opportunities. And all of those little things that you wouldn't have even thought of are going to cost you time, money, and stress along the way. And I don't want that for you. That's exactly why I've poured my 11 plus years of wedding industry experience into Wedding Weekend by Design, a six-step framework to planning an unforgettable wedding weekend from start to finish. The intuitive planning framework inside Wedding Weekend by Design is made to proactively steer you clear of the mistakes that I see couples make over and over again so that you can design your entire wedding weekend with confidence and ease. Inside this planning package, you'll find a six-step framework that's incredibly easy to follow. And the best part is that it works with any budget, any timeline, and any hosting format. 
We walk through designing your master schedule, budgeting for individual events, finding the best venue for you and your vision, creative strategies for food and drinks, critical organization and communication considerations, and even sample schedules and menus so that you can get inspired by what other couples have done. Get started planning out the details of your dream wedding weekend right now when you visit weddingweekend.co. That website one more time is weddingweekend.co. I can't wait to see you there.